That right there is a lot of subscribers, a lot of new subscribers. And if you're a new subscriber to the channel, you may not know that we're not just a YouTube channel. We are also a manufacturing shop. We make a bunch of things, uh, but the main thing that we make in-house is Kydex holsters. And I'm gonna tell you why. Now there's a lot of materials that you could use to make holsters. The classic examples would be cloth, you know, heavy duty canvas or nylon or leather, very classic holsters. And they're very useful for classic guns and they're very handy in certain ways. Like if uh, you find any cool new sidearms on your travels, you can just stick it right into your leather holster. But there is a downside to those materials. As cloth frays and gets thinner, it doesn't protect the weapon quite as well. And as leather uh, begins to wear, it can kind of stretch out. And now it's no longer protecting the trigger guard in the same way that a rigid plastic holster can. And modern firearms, striker fired and double action, uh, they definitely want more protection for the weapon and specifically the trigger guard right here. Something like a Kydex or even an injection molded plastic holster are going to offer that in a, a much better way, even though it requires being perfectly fitted to the weapon. Now, like I mentioned, injection molding is an option. There's a bunch of injection molded holsters out there, but we prefer this thermoplastic called Kydex. Now, Kydex is a sheet plastic. It is partially uh, acrylic, it is partially PVC. I think the official name should be something like chlorinated acrylide, uh, but I don't know how to say that. And uh, we buy it in two thicknesses, but the main thing that Kydex gives us is its ability to be thermoformed. That means that you can heat it up and it becomes really pliable. And you can vacuum form it over a mold. We used to squish it in between foam presses, but vacuum forming lets us go a lot faster and get better definition, which means cheaper products, but also better products because they actually fit the gun and make a better holster. Now you might be asking yourself, why thermoforming? Why not injection mold? And injection molding is very cool, but the short answer is uh, all these molds right here. Uh, we have a ton of molds. This is not all of them. This is just a few. But imagine, because each of these molds can be used to make one holster type for one weapon or light combination in half a dozen different lengths. And we can do that just with this right here. If we were injection molding, we would probably need all of these molds times five, because we make about five different versions of holster on each mold, times two, because we need both sides. And uh, yeah, it would be really, really hard to keep up. Also, we can develop these molds really quickly. If people keep inventing guns, which I think they will, uh, we will be able to support those guns relatively quickly. Unfortunately, thermoforming plastics do have some downsides. These are the kinds of tests that we have to do to try to make sure that we can be really, really consistent with the plastics and get really, really consistent results with our holsters. And we've been learning, as I said, over the last 10 years, but most of that's been really, really just kind of trial and error stuff. It's only been over the last year or two that we've been doing consistent tests and really carefully keeping track of our results and talking to experts. Just this week, we were talking to a chemical engineer. He was standing right over there and he gave me the best analogy that I have ever heard in my life. He said, you know when Indiana Jones goes into that room full of snakes? And then I said, do you mean the well of the souls? in the city of Tanis, the lost Egyptian city of Tanis that was buried in the desert because of a sandstorm that lasted for a whole year. And then he said, the snakes are all sliding over top of each other. And that's how the polymer chains inside of a sheet of Kydex works. When you heat it up, you want to heat that sheet very evenly so that all of those uh, snakes can slide all over each other really well. And then once you form it, you want to cool it slowly enough that those snakes, those polymer chains can actually come to rest in such a way that there aren't internal stresses that will make the Kydex weaker. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? 
Which makes perfect sense because when holsters fail, whether in real life or uh, on our various test beds that we have built, they generally fail in areas where they get a lot of pressure, not surprisingly, but they also fail in areas where we may not be doing the cooling exactly right. The inconsistent heating might actually be causing some of these interior instabilities um, that we're looking at. Fortunately, we have an idea how we can track down some of those things and figure out the stuff that we know now that we don't fully know yet. First thing that we're going to do is remove as much variation as possible from our heating setup. These are the presses that we use to heat Pydex, and uh, they're a vast improvement over the previous system, which was uh, toaster ovens. Really, really hard to get accurate, consistent temperatures in those, and these are better, but there's still a lot of variation. We've done a huge amount of work removing a variation from other steps on our production line. We've got a whole bunch of tolerances tightened up on the CNC machines, uh, in the bending, in the notching. Even hardware has specific fit guns and specific tolerances dialed in in ways that we probably only could have dreamed of years ago. But now we're gonna try to do this with our heat press. Again, these things right here, uh, have had a lot of modifications to them and they're definitely a lot better than they used to be, but they're not as good as they could be. This right here is the future of Kydex, heating and pressing, maybe. Uh, it may be the future of uh, production, but it's definitely gonna be the future of testing. So what we have here is a very custom built Kydex press that solves all the problems we've had in the past, but most importantly, lets us remove as much variation as uh, we think that we have. So for example, you pull this lever here, uh, it opens up and out rolls the thing automatically with gravity. Uh, we had these aluminum plates Teflon coated with exactly the coating that, uh, that we want here. When you slide it back in and you close it, these pneumatic cylinders on the side are gonna keep the pressure exactly how we want it for the Kydex, regardless of how thick it is. And we also have a better understanding of the electrical system inside of here. We know how all the heating plates work because we wound them. We know where the thermocouples are for the thermostat because we inserted them. Uh, we know which controllers we're using. We spec them out and we've tested them, uh, not in like a laboratory setting, but at a much higher level of precision than any of our previous stuff. So after we make thousands and thousands and thousands of holsters on this thing, we will be able to be a lot more confident that we have mastered heating you know, up until that non-laboratory level. The idea is you remove as much mysterious variance from your material or from the beginning of your process so that you can hone in on what some of the issues are later on in the process. And once we are able to solve heating and once we are able to solve cooling, uh, I'm really, really confident that we will understand Kydex. So does that mean you should wait until some future day to order a T-Rex holster? Well, no, I stand by the products that we make right now. Over the last 10 years, we've been making Kydex holsters and getting better at it all the time. We've got our molds dialed in to where our holsters are better than they've ever been before. And if you order a holster, uh, we will stand by it and there's a lifetime warranty for anybody who is capable of breaking one. So. What I'm saying is we've improved the process a lot over the last 10 years. We're continually improving it. I love bragging about what the guys are accomplishing on the line here, the speed and the accuracy of what we're doing and the sheer amount of things that we currently support. But at the same time, I know that there are still a few unsolved mysteries and we're gonna figure them out and we're gonna keep getting better. That constant improvement of the product is gonna keep happening and uh, I'm excited for it. Speaking of pyramids and ancient history, uh, have we done this bit before? Anyway, the Pharaoh Shishak. The Egyptian Pharaoh Shishak. Yes, invaded the city of Jerusalem around about 980 BC, and he may have taken the ark back to the city of Tanis. He was one of the great military leaders of Egypt with a ton of conquests of other nations. And uh, would you like to see the temple that he built in Karnak? Because there's an inscription on the wall that depicts all the spoils of war that he brought back home. And for reasons that are <laughs> way too complicated to go into here, uh, I may have the best documentation of it.
in the olden days, the way this was done was by tracing the hieroglyphics onto a piece of clear plastic. But I think we can do the same thing digitally. Now, there's gonna be some issues with perspective, but I think we can fix those digitally as well. Here we go. 